advised to go fishing for pike. You got any ideas on the subject? We aren't nearly as cruel to fish as fish are to fish. And we don't catch nearly as many fish as fish do. Well, I've never looked at it that way. That way. Welcome to this week's Canal Gratis News. <laughs> yeah. This is politics, right? This is democracy. Yeah. <laughs> Might be the problem. Because we, we sort of like to go with the flow. Yeah. yeah. Adapt. Like okay. the feeling. Okay. Adapt or die. Adapt or die. Welcome everybody to tonight's show. Kanalgratis.se is the name of the channel. My name is Johan Rue. <gasps> oh my god. Look down there. Today we have guests in the show. We have uh, Albert. Oh, all the names again. Help me out guys. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Albert Affe. Alfred. And Alfred, there you go. Yes. I'm so sorry. The Flams och Trams winner who is going to be visited by me and Joja to go fishing for a new personal best. I uh, thought we were gonna bring them along for this show because we were supposed to go there and we were supposed to be there and fish right now. But the fishing is dead slow. Let us know how your fishing is going right now. I'm gonna let you in in a little bit of in in a second. I'm gonna let you in and, and and tell you how my fishing has been. It's been up and down, up and down, not very steady at all. First of all, let's make sure that we have sound that everybody can hear us loud and clear. It looks loud and clear. clear. Uh, guys, uh, over there, can you can you hear me loud and clear? You, yes. Yeah. yeah. The trio from Skype. Perfect. Very good. Good. So we're on. We're rolling. So, did you guys fish, Affe and Albert and, uh, uh, <laughs> help me, Affe, August. Albert and August, did you, did you do any fishing <laughs> since we talked last, past week? Uh, not me. Uh, me and Alfred have been one time. Okay, you've been out one time. Did you catch anything? Four pikes, two perch. Four pikes, two perch. Yeah, that's right. Right. And two pikes. Right. So, is that good or bad for where you're at? Ah, uh, quite mm. bad. Quite bad? Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll get to work on that soon. You know, me and Joji, we were on our way down there to go fish with you guys, but the fishing from southern parts of Sweden has slowed down quite a bit right now. So uh, we're going to be waiting um, at least for a week or two before we do this, unfortunately. But it will be for the better because when we finally go out, we're gonna catch them. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm. All right, let's yeah. check with the audience, see if anyone did anything fun last weekend. I've, I've seen Hannes Becker, top fan of Canal Gratis. He has been catching it and uh, yeah, let us know. I know you guys are on a slightly delay here, but let us know. King Dorian is there. I see all, all, all our good friends from Canal Gratis. It's so good to see you. All right. Sorry. Um, I've, I've been out of office for a while, I've been fishing and filming, we have been doing a River Pike episode, episode 5, uh, we had a good fish on that episode, and, um, when I, and I also I was very recently in Åland, if you follow me on Johan Rue Instagram or on the Canal Gratis Instagram, or if you follow Pontus Sjölund, you can see that Flams och Trams has been on a film shoot uh, in uh, Åland. Åland is a small island of between Finland and Sweden. And it's highly debatable on to which country this island belongs. It has been declared independent for a couple of years and uh, so on and so forth. But uh, so I don't really know. You guys have to fill me in what Åland belongs to. But I think Åland is, uh, like I said, an independent sort of country of its own. And um, they have good pike fishing there. And uh, so we had to go there and, and fish. One of the first big pikes that we filmed on Canal Gratis was Johan Boman, who caught a 12.95 kilo pike. We had a surfix take um, on that lure and we actually filmed that. And when we filmed that, it was back in the days when we had tape cameras, not memory cards and stuff that we have now. So, you know, yeah, there was a lot of hard work to get that shot. And uh, it was uh, with Stefan Trumstedt and Johan Boman who caught that fish. I actually think... That was the first 10 kilo plus pike that saw light 
on Kemal Gratis. I think so. I don't know. It's in the Hall of Fame now anyway. So, yeah. Moving on, guys. So, uh, we were in Åland archipelago and fishing. And fishing there was quite slow. And um, from what I've learned and from what I've heard is that the fishing has been quite slow all over Sweden the past week. From the north to the south, basically. I mean, sure, we catch them. But they're not really hammering hard. And we've had temperature drops. So that might have slowed down or maybe even temporarily stopped the spawning thing that is going on now. Normally May, this time, uh, the pikes are sort of ready from Stockholm and south. So um, you should have post-spawn fishing, which should be good right now. But right now, a little bit slow. And... Um, when the fishing is slow like that, you need to come up with your dirty tricks to, to get the pikes to eat and feed correctly. So after the new sec section that is coming up right now and after after we have um, uh, looked at the uh, what's coming up for the week, we're going to go uh, into our tips and tricks drawer here. I had some serious tips from Pontus Sjölund when we were fishing the other days here and we actually had some good success with that. We're going to talk power dots, we're going to talk weedless rigs. We're going to talk flat nose. We're going to have a lot of fun. Right, guys? Albert, Affe, and... That's so damn hard, that final name. August. 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 I'm so... I'm, I'm, I feel so bad. August? I'm, so, I'm, I'm going to start from the right next time. August, Albert, Affe. Did I get it right? Yeah. Yeah, right. There you go. Yes. Do, do you guys have popcorn? No. No. No popcorn? Yeah. And uh, eat. Yeah. All right. When 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 me and Joy arrive, there needs to be popcorn. All right, okay. <laughs> we, we we fix fix Tell your mom the, she needs to make popcorn. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, like a kilo. Yeah, oh. definitely like a kilo. Uh, hang on, I'm just gonna read a quick comment off of the uh, comment box here on the right. And guys, if you're not, if you're if you're watching and not comment, you need to register a Google account, subscribe, of course, to canalgratis.se, and go inside and have some fun, make some comments, make some new friends, chat about fishing, and just kick your feet up and hang out and have fun in the Canal Gratis live studio that goes down every Monday at eight o'clock. All right, over to. Gothenburg now, Studio 3, for latest news. This is Alex. Välkomna till veckans kanal Gratis News. I torsdags på Kristi Himmelfärdsdagen bjöd Göteborg både på vackert väder och valgravsmetet för 42 året i rad. Tävlingen arrangeras av sportfiskarna tillsammans med studiefrämjandet och fisket bedrivs i Vallgraven, Göteborgs innersta kanaler. 189 fiskare deltog och extra roligt var att omkring hälften i år var kvinnor. Det säger sportfiskarnas ungdomsansvarig Hans Linkvist. Deltagarna metar upp sin fång som vanligtvis består av mört i eller abborre. Efter tävlingen slut väljer man själv ifall man vill behålla sin fångst eller skänka den till Naturhistoriska museet för analys eller forskningsändamål. Efter dagens slut var det till slut Nora Rönkvist som vann juniorklassen med 1380 gram. Avslutningsvis berättar Kalle Sederblad en av deltagarna om sin dag inne bland Göteborgs kanal. Ja, då var årets eh, valgravsmeter klar för i år. Det har varit en magisk dag som ni ser i det kalastigt väder. Det har varit mycket folk här idag och mycket barn och familjer som har varit här. Vi har varit ett gäng på kanske har varit 10-15 stycken som har varit här blandat med vuxna och barn som har fiskat. De flesta av oss har fått fisk. Jag tror det är nog tionde året vi är här i år. Det är en riktigt trevlig tradition som jag tycker att de flesta borde testa här inne i mitt i centrala Göteborg. Vi går över till Elven Ljusnan. Kanal Gratis News fortsätter sin granskning av vattenkraften. I morgon tisdag hålls huvudförhandlingen om Edeforsen, en sträcka i Ljusnan. Sträckan är en 4-6-sträcka vilket enligt miljöbalken betyder att inga vattenkraftverk får byggas. Sträckan är även ett Natura 2000-område och ingår därmed i EUs habitatdirektiv. 
Området har även utökat strandskydd på 200 meter istället för vanligtvis 100 meter på grund av att ljusnan klassas som ett riksintresse för det rörliga friluftslivet och utgörs av en skyddsvärd dalgång. Trots alla dessa skydd vill Fortum riva ut ett gammalt kraftverk till förmån för ett större, cirka 20 gånger större. Det vill även bredda älven med det dubbla eftersom just här utgör älven en så kallad flaskhals där älven smalar av. Allt med motiveringen att vattenmiljön blir bättre efter en utbyggnad. Ett stort problem är att det befintliga kraftverket saknar fiskväg och redan i början av 1900-talet borde en sådan finnas enligt gällande dom. Fortum svarar med att en fiskväg finns. Kammarkollegiet har svarat att man då vill se denna fiskväg men det får man inte av säkerhetsskäl, säger Fortum. Det var i oktober 2012 som Fortum ansökte om utbyggnaden men Mark- och miljödomstolen avslog då deras ansökan. I fredag startade succéprojektet Börja fiska där 5 000 barn ges möjligheten att låna en fiskutrustning under sommaren. Bakom projektet står sportfiskarna Abu Garcia, unga sportfiskare samt Svea Skog. Barn som lånar utrustning får även ta del av alla tips som krävs för en lyckad fiskesommar. Och platser att fiska på är många då även ett fiskekort för mer än 500 vatten ingår. Sportfiskarnas generalsekreterare Anders Karlsson menar att förutsättningarna för ett livslångt intresse och engagemang för livet under ytan börjar här. Olle Lidensjö, Abu Garcias försäljningschef, är även han mycket positiv till projektet och säger att företaget vill få fler barn och ungdomar att komma ner till vattenbrynet och fiska genom projektet. Vart man kan låna utrustning samt få mer information hittar man på sportfiskarna.se fiska. Det var allt för den här veckan. Vi avslutar dagens sändning med ett potentiellt nytt svenskt rekord. En kar på hela 27,43 kilo som Birger Holmqvist lyckades fånga nu i helgen. Nyhetsredaktionen tackar för att ni tittade och önskar en fortsatt grym fiskevecka. Över till Studio 1 Stockholm. All right, thank you for that Alex and welcome back. And we're sorry we didn't have the English subtitle on. I don't really know what happened, but it's been a busy week and uh, they probably weren't finished in time but i guarantee you afterwards after this broadcast is over you're going to be able to watch the news session with swedish subtitle and if you just clicked on and if you're watching this show after it's the live logo sort of is not there means you can switch on subtitle and understand the news it's swedish news but it's super important news delivered from studio 3 gothenburg All right, moving on, uh, we got some decent shows coming up this week. We have been doing a collaboration project together with TA Fishing. TA Fishing is the number one YouTube channel in UK. And uh, Mike Pullen, who is the man of the channel, was uh, flew over here to Sweden. And uh, we went to Finland to do some pike fishing. You can go on to TA Fishing, check out his pike show, where he fish it with Mikka Mekkelen and Stefan Trumstedt. And we also went for some nice perch fishing. And I'm going to roll. Actually, I'm going to show you the introduction of that show. If I can find all the clips. It's called, it's going out tomorrow, guys, at 8 o'clock. And it's called Spring Fishing. No, not out to generate. Uh, it's called Spring Perch Fishing. Spring Perch Fishing. Faith TA Fishing. All right, here we go. Sorry. Sorry, I'm babbling. I'm buying time. That's what I'm doing. Albert Affe August. Oh, I got it. <laughs> Are you with me? Perfect. Yep. Yeah. Good, good, good there. All right. Let's have a look. <coughs> I have a special guest on the show today. This is Mike Holland from TA Fishing. So, Tom, how, how are we fish these lures? You see, I fish really, really slow. A beautiful perch, and be ready when it falls. They because, take it on the drop. Yeah, they yeah. take it on the drop. Always on the drop. It was sunny for about 10 minutes. <laughs> it was lovely. <laughs> yeah, that's close to a good day. <laughs> One more, and you're going to have a blinding day. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Lots of fun. All right, sorry. Oh, you need to see this. You actually need to see this. 
I'm gonna show you when I start my engine. This Verado has got such a nice tone to it. That's what she sounds like. Oh yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Johan Rive and I'm from... Albert, August and... Affe. Affe. I was gonna say that. <laughs> How do you like that? How do you like that intro? Looks awesome. Looks yeah. awesome. How do you like the sound of that boat? <laughs> so cool. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. You're gonna ride in that boat very soon. We're gonna go super Ooh. fast. Oh yeah. Do Do you have speed limits <laughs> in your lake where you live? No, I don't think so. That's bad. I like to break awesome. speed limits. That's what we do. <laughs> we'll find one. I'm sorry there's a five knot sign somewhere so we can break some rules. Um, that's what's happening Tuesday, <laughs> guys. TA fishing coming up. Some uh, perch fishing with Mike Pollen from TA fishing. Guided by Stockholm's Fiske. Tom, you remember Tom from Perch Pro. Tom Backlund is taking us out on his... Actually the water where he fished Perch Pro, I think. And um, yeah, showing us his tricks. Uh, it's a tough day because it's a lot of wind and stuff, but there are ways to work around that, you know, even when it's tricky. If you hang up with the pro, you're gonna catch them. And we did. Tune in tomorrow. All right. Now, another big surprise, guys, is that on Thursday we're gonna roll out a Flams of Trams episode. And I'm talking a real Flams of Trams episode here. Hope you guys are up for that. I'm gonna roll the intro right now. See what you guys think of it. Here we go. Uh, let's see here. Yes. Hi, Joe. Yeah, you can hear that. It is actually a Flams of Trams episode that we did together with uh, Joe Peterson from True Glidlers. The man himself. Here we go. Checking the intro now. Hi, Joe. Hello. How are you doing? We're good. Finally, have a guest on the show. Oh, yeah? Yep. The tourist wants to take a picture of that little pipe. Okay. Can you get that your head out of the picture so I just can... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we need to feed Joe. No, no, no. Yeah. Skoga Holm Slimpa and Kallus Caviar. Joe disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> All right. There it is. Yeah. There we go. Wow! Awesome! Look fly! You know when you're walking along the beach and um, you see a dead fish? Yeah. And you go up to it and you lick it? Yeah. This is what it's like. I know. Perfect. We're only out for 30 seconds. I want to go fun. fish now, yo, yeah. Yeah, me too. I, I saw you. I saw you guys. Was it Albert? No, Affe was laughing. When we rolled the intro, <laughs> was was it fun? Did you like the intro? Yeah. 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 It, it was fun. We fed Joe so much disgusting food for four days. I, I'm. I'll be surprised if I ever see him again. And all the time when we did that, he was like, "Wait till you come to United States. I'm gonna feed you some, some, some." And we were like, "Sure. Pizza, hamburger. You know, whatever you guys have over there." So, a <laughs> lot of fun. A lot of fun. And we 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 worked. It's, it's actually gonna be two episodes. The first one is going out this Thursday. The other one, mm, I don't really know when, but it's coming out very soon. So, a lot of fun. Stay tuned for that. 8 o'clock, Thursday. <sighs> yeah, Tobias Lindqvist says in the comments bar here, finally some Flams of Trams. I can tell you right now, we, I think we have like four or five, four Flams of Trams episodes in the archives waiting to come out. So, there's going to be Flams of Trams now for months ahead. That's what it is. Because it's ice out. So me and Joy were working it hard. All right, moving on. Some uh, we had some report. You know, you can send in catches on Canal Gratis lures, but you can also send in catches that you caught that is not on Canal Gratis lures. You're most welcome to do that. Sometimes we bring them on our live show. Uh, we had a very super nice pike here sent in from um, Andreas Strömberg. He caught it on a fly, and it's twelve point. 12.07 kilo. So, important catch. I'm showing you the picture right now. 
Uh, now I lost the Skype thing here, but you get the picture. Big congratulations, Andreas Strömberg, on your on your fly caught pike. That's a ridiculous fish. Amazing. Well done. Uh, we all, moving on here. Uh, we have uh, another perch. This is a new personal best for for, for Philip. Uh, it's a it's a perch it's from southern parts of Sweden, and it ate a jig relax silver glitter apparently. So big congratulations, Philip, and thank you for reporting at smack at canalgradis.se. All right. How are you guys doing down there? Are you still with me? Yep. Yes. You are, guys. Do you know what a power dot is? Yes. yes. You do. What What is it? Will you explain it? It's like a small weight. Yes. Yeah. Of the belly of the base. Yeah. Exactly. It's a small weight that you can plant, insert on the belly of your bait or on the side or whatever. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. So guys, I'm gonna let you go now. I'm gonna close the Skype link, and um, yeah. because uh, I'm seeing that I'm losing CPU, so this might crash. So I'm 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 gonna we're gonna quit while we're ahead, and we're going going to go into this bait session. I also want to ask you before you guys go: Have you fished this lure? The ma oh, sorry, you can't see it. What? You're on delay. <laughs> Have you fished the McMe? <laughs> the, the, the McMe? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What do you think of it? Nice. Uh, say uh, side to side. Side to side weaving action. But I haven't fish. That's correct. Nice. It's side. really easy to turn. Easy also. to fish. Mm -hmm. It is. Have you caught any pikes on it? No. no, not yet. Not yet. This is this Only is some strikes. No, this is gonna be one of the deadliest weapon that we're gonna use when me and Joye come down there because we're gonna fish post spawn pikes, and they're gonna they're gonna be we're gonna present this little irritating guys, the shitty ghost and the annoying destroy color, and we're gonna destroy. Stay tuned for that. Now I'm gonna move into power dots. I'm gonna let you guys go now, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, guys? Yes. Yeah. All right. Have bye. fun. Bye. Bye bye. Love you guys. <laughs> All right, guys. Closing the link here. Sorry. Here we go. And bringing up Strike Pro Power Dots. That's what we're going to talk about. But I don't have any Power Dots with me. But you can see them in the little frame here. This is a, I don't think it's. It's a little weight that you glue on to your bait. And we have been having some, we had some good fishing last week when we did river pike, but we also had some slow fishing. And the thing is when things stop off like this, you need to maybe slow down your fishing a little bit. And you need to, if you're pike fishing right now, what I like to do is maybe go very, very deep or to fish the fish that has spawned and moved out or Ponte Sjölund showed me the other day when we were fishing that he wanted to go very, very far into the weeds. Yeah, that's what he did. So when we went first starting off with fishing in the weeds, uh, Pontus had very success. He fished a flat nose. I don't know if you've seen it. It's uh, Edwin Johansson at Canal Gratis who makes these little babies. And they can be rigged with an owner beast hook. So, uh, and then you can, it's, it's pretty much weedless then. So then you can cast it into the weeds because when, when, when the north wind comes down like it's been doing for a week now or a couple of days and it's cold and the wind is hammering in one direction, just going and going and going, you need to be casting almost all the way up to land and, f and, f and, fish, and, and fish through the weeds because the fish is going to hide close to that structure because it holds warmer water. And it make the pikes go in there and just wait out the cold weather, been waiting to start spawning again. So, pig shed junior, flat nose, whatever small lures you can get your hands on, owner beast hooks, that'll help you catch fish. Pontus 
came out on top this weekend with a nice fish. He caught the biggest one. Easy because he was so persistent on fishing in the weeds. Go into the weeds, guys, or go deep. Also, when the fishing starts, we're using the power dot. I put an annotation thing for you there, and I, and I, 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 I put it here. So what we did was that we, I can actually bring up another picture for you here. You can see this one is rigged a little bit different. Um, let me see if I can scale it up for you a little bit. Hope you still have my sound. Now you can see that this one has uh, 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 one gram of weight with a power dot in the front and one gram of weight with a power dot in the back. And Pontus Sjölund showed me this rigging. And what it did was that it changed the sinking pattern of the McMe and it makes it slide hard side to side. A lot of fun. So you can try that out. I'll definitely recommend it. And also now when the fish very soon is going to be postponed and start feeding like crazy, it's going to be a lot of fun. I have met a new friend this weekend also. Let me take this opportunity to say hello to a guy named Philip. Uh, his name is Philip Bloomberg. And he just started pike fishing quite recently. And he uh, caught a, a super nice pike uh, when we were filming. He was actually sort of a little bit guiding Flamsa Trams actually. And you can see that I'm looking straight into that pike's mouth because it has inhaled a buster jerk hashtag. And the buster jerks we also rigged with a power dot which was a lot of fun. And I'll show you right now how we do it. And we, what we do is we have the buster jerk and it's only available in shallow. I think it's even called, no, not super shallow, it's shallow. And what you can do is that you can take the, I think it's the four grammar or the five grammar and you put it on the belly here, all right? Over here, I don't have it on this one, but over there, there you put it. And what happens is when you're fishing brackish water, you'll have a suspending buster. Super important when the fishing is slow like this because you just want to increase your hang time and just let the lure sit there. Sometimes you can do a spin stop for many seconds and the pike will eat. And the hooking chances increases a lot when the pike is hitting a bait standing still. So the power dot is very, very useful for that type of fishing important stuff and as you can see I think you can see on the picture here how you how you um, uh, you put the power dots here and here there will be a rigging video uh, or a rigging session in Flams or Trams I'm sure where we go through how to do this uh, uh, this uh, uh, what do you call it this tune tune up of the make me uh, thing so uh, let's see if we have any question on questions on that. Uh, see, Montaminen says he's going to try it out. Someone said spinner. Yeah, see, Montaminen says spinner baits because I know he fished a clear water lake and had a dead hard strike on a spinner bait. And uh, I'm not surprised. Sometimes, you know, you can... Um, uh, you need to experiment when fishing is slow. Definitely, for sure. Uh, Samuel Hallqvist wants to know when the next fish show comes out, and uh, I don't really know. It's going. Uh, they have, uh, they have episode that is uh, ready, I think. But uh, uh, we 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 sort of only do two videos per week. We might start doing three videos per week. So there's a waiting line to release the films on Canal Gratis right now. Um, so we'll see, but it's not going to be far off. Maximum, I'd say, a couple of weeks, and we have to do it. Now, Afa Wabari and everybody who was recently with me on Skype came online here. So a lot of fun, guys. Thank you for joining through Skype. And uh, Lao Boom says, Wheat ya no in chill canal. Canal. Just drop them down to the bottom. Simon says, yes, drop it down. Ah, no, no, again, Netherlander. And jig them. Yeah, and jig them. A lot of fun, guys. Um, we uh, can take this opportunity also real quick and highlight that 
we caught a uh, decent pike in the filming of River Pike on the Canal Gratis Okeboji perch. Um, I was supposed to prepare this before, but then I forgot it's not a super big deal, but we can take the opportunity to talk about it. Since you're here and I'm waiting for questions, if anyone have any question, <gasps> it's not uploaded yet. Emma, if you can see this, we need to upload all the 22 pounders into the archive SASP. Okay, I'll just go into my Facebook and I grab the picture from there. And we'll see how it goes. There we go. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you guys. Mm -hmm. It's going to be up here in a minute. Three, two, one, go. Okay, boy, okay, boy. Okay, I I having so hard time pronouncing that name. It's Okeboji Perch. Black Okeboji Perch is the name of the color. Pig Shad is the name of the lure. 25 grams of flex head. And this was a very, very tricky day when we caught this fish. It's 118 centimeters and it's 10.13. And uh, uh, we had this fish pretty fast. And it I had a 25 grams of flex head. So I was fishing on seven meters of water, very deep. And inserted in the tail of this lure, I have a Bauer power rattle. And a, what is a Bauer power rattle? Well, a Bauer power rattle is a plastic little um, uh, tube that you can push inside the tail. And that has rattle chambers inside it. Because the rubber lure, even when the rigs and everything, it's quite silent when it's sneaking through the water. So the rattle tail in the tail, in the paddle tail in the back helps to announce our present when we're fishing. And it worked out pretty good for me that day. And uh, the fishing was super slow. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it anymore for you. Watch River Pike in a couple of weeks and you'll, you'll see how it goes. But fun fishing session. And I'm, I'm, now I can't live without the Bauer Power Rattle. It's a lot of fun. I don't know if, it, if it's in the end is going to make a big difference, but... Um, it led me up to a great fish, at least this time, so I'm, I'm going to keep using it. Maybe next time, on the next slide, we'll talk about the bow rattles a little bit more. And, um, yeah. I'm reviewing some questions that you guys have. Uh, into your dream... I'm getting an electric engine for my new boat, 3.5, 1.5 meters and so. Yeah, electric engine in the price range of 3,000, I really wouldn't know. Uh, I haven't tested any in that price range. I'm, 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 so far, I'm not very experienced with electrical engine. I've only used the Minn Kota Riptide so far. And, uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, we also have a question about the Roots Rod, BFT 6.7, and the difference between a 6.7 and a 6.9. And the, uh, the benefits and the difference between the different lengths. Well, if you have a longer rod, you're going to cast longer normally. And uh, it's also going to be easier to steer the fish uh, when you're fighting it because you will have more leverage when you're pushing and fighting the fish. And also, it can be a little bit more forgiving when you're fighting the fish because you have more action to absorb the shocks when the fish is shaking his head back and forth, back and forth. So that's sort of the main difference between the two rods. Um, the longer rod might also be a little bit easier if you're just uh, spin fishing a rubber or a glider or a McMe and you just want to hold it like this and 
do, do, do the light taps, you'll have a longer rod and um, it's a little bit easier to steer uh, uh, again. And um, the shorter rod, the benefits of a shorter rod is that it's shorter so you don't dip it in the water if you're a short person or you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're short <laughs> for some reason, like me, I'm not a very tall person. So I, uh, I, then it can be recommended because when you jerk fish hard, you're going to dip the tip in the water all the time and it goes splash, splash, splash. So for those reasons, because to match your physical it's it's maybe better to have a shorter rod in the beginning. It's a little bit easier maybe. Um, it's also when it's uh, shorter, it's stiffer, and it gives the bait a different movement. Uh, you can push them harder, and you might have even more cast weight on that. I don't know. No, I don't think so. It's the same, or it's less on the seven six. So I'd say depending on how long you are yourself. And what you mainly are fishing. If you're a short person, mainly fishing jerkbait lurch, go for the 6.7. And if you're a little bit taller person, I'd go for a 6.9. That's what I do. I'm using the 6.9 myself right now. Yeah. All right. Reviewing some more comments here, guys. Um... I bought my first Buster Jerk recently and I can't get a sweet side-to-side -side action. Hang on. Does the leader have to be stiff or what is the problem? The problem is... Um, uh, no, you shouldn't have a stiff leader. The, the more loose, the more soft the leader is, fluorocarbon or titanium or whatever, if it's, uh, it's, uh, it's better because it, it, it helps the lure to move from side to side. And just tap your rod like that. In the beginning, if you think it's hard to get the movement, don't even tap your rod. Just reel and fire it with the... Kick it with the leader on the reel like this. And it takes time to get them to move properly. It's going to take a day or two before you get into it. And also it might be a little bit tricky if no one is there to help you in the beginning. So... That's what it is. Moving on. All right, so he's the guy with the rod question. MRT, FRL MRT is uh, 176, 167 centimeters. So, yeah, if I were you, I'd start with the 6, 7 for sure. All right, more tips and tricks here. Uh, Niklas wants to know if there's going to be Perch Pro 2015. Oh yeah, uh, it's it's going to air. It's not really decided yet, but it will be recorded. There will be another session of Perch Pro. It's not it's decided exactly when, but sure, there will be if recording 2015. Yeah, teams are set and everything. We will be announcing them soon. Uh, yeah, the rest of everybody is out is working actually. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Noble ninety one wonders if I'll recommend McRubber for fishing perch, and sure I do. The Mac, the, the the McRubber bass, if that's what you're meaning, uh, is a superb lure for for fishing perch. Uh, I fished it early on when the class only had it to uh, uh, prototype stage. We bass fished with it in um, um, in uh, Minnesota. That was a lot of fun. There's actually an episode on that on Canal Gratis. Uh, it's called Swart Sunker TV uh, Bass something. And we fish for bass and have a lot of fun. And uh, then uh, it, uh, it we, Klaus started fishing it here and he has fished it also before we went bass fish with it but I think that the bass was one of the first fish that were caught on it actually uh, but uh, it's a superb perch lure and me and Joye tested it out uh, we caught on the Canal Gratis colors the white wiggle the proper popper, proper perch and the yellow dawn color we have caught kilo plus perch on all those colors in one show 
you can see it. It's in the Flamso Trams archive. Uh, super good. But I'd say any color, you know, just go for it. Just try to match the water where you fish and buy some color, some McRubber uh, colors that you see fit close to, you know, the color range that you want to fish and to match the, the water where you're fishing. Match the hatch, match the hatch as Brad, um, sorry, Rusty Brown said. Uh, the bass angler from uh, from US when he was in the live show uh, before the sport fishing fair in Jön shopping you might have seen it all right moving on Sander show yeah Sander show is coming up this year for sure we're working on it um, noble 91 says yes but the perch here are different well how noble let me know how are they different fill me in here and I'll, I can try to help you out uh yeah dark schneider 1337 says he wants to see f copier f gear lube in the live show i hear you there Writing it down i love it when you guys ask for guests f copier gear lube he's one of my favorites too i'd like to spend some time with him for sure he's a great perch guy too i have a lot of questions for him he could teach me a thing or two when it comes to that uh Fig fishing teams wonder if there's more open source coming up. Yes, there is more open source coming up, uh, but not right now. Now we want to wait for the first babies that you guys created. We want to see them. We want to fish them. We also want reports on the open source flies that you guys fished or has been sent out. And sure, when that's good and done and we'll see what you guys thought of the end product, we'll, we'll go for another session of open source. Open source is always going to be there. We're, we're, it's always going to be there for sure. Moving on. Alexander Aho wants to know if I can explain how the pike spawn, like weather temperature and how the fish pre and post spawn. Well, I, I, I'm not an expert on this field. We should have Tobias Frans I'm here from Team Abu Garcia. And Sport Fiskana, he is the best guy that I know to, to answer these things because he has a lot of knowledge in this field. But um, the hatching is um, by day temperature, so to speak. So uh, there's a myth that says the pike spawn on, uh, on uh, 7 degrees Celsius of water or so, but that's not actually true. They can actually spawn on a 0 or 1 degree temperature of water. It's just going to take longer for the eggs to hatch. And there are some believers out there who believes that the big, big pike spawn on much deeper water. And they actually, I think they have documented pike spawning underneath the ice. Um, so it's probably going to be very different depending on in what system you're fishing. Some pikes are just used to, like up in northern Sweden, they have a very, very long winter. And they have a very fast spring. So I'd say... Probably a lot of pikes are going to be spawning underneath the ice as further up north you go. But that's just a guess. That's not a knowledge or a fact that I have. It's just a second guess. Best way to fish uh, post uh, pre-spawn pike is to go on ice out. First week when the ice breaks, best week ever. And I always miss that. I've done it a couple of times. You can watch them in Flamso Trams. Flamso Trams Ice Out is the episode called. Um... Super slow fishing. I mean, I'm using a low gear ratio Calcutta for that. And the 301 I'm using right now. That's my slow fishing rod. And just super, super slow retrieval with a lightly weight rubber lure. That's what I do. Post spawn. I mean, after when the pike is done, when there's no spawning, they're going to be start eating fast they it might slow for for a week or two sure uh depending on how fast the spawning session were and and if you're fishing the archipelago system brackish water you know swedish east coast and southern parts of sweden you're going to have different sessions of different groups of pike spawning in this big base in these marsh systems and these inner lakes and if you go in in a freshwater lake in sweden it might go a little bit faster on a certain temperature and then it's going to be over real fast and the fish is going to move out on deeper water quickly. So when you post spawn fishing, you need to track the bait fish. It's so important when you post spawn fishing because they'd be hungry when they have been 
uh, spawning. They want to eat up fast before the temperatures goes up. So you need to follow the food to find the pike. Oli Björkstern wants to know the weight on the McMe. Uh, let me see. I'm going to have to go inside the ecom. The Canal Guardians webshop myself and have a look because I don't, I don't know the casting weight. And it doesn't really say here either. Uh, it's 10 centimeter long. 47 grams. Yeah, Smart Sunker for sure. He'll he'll probably be here uh, someday also. He's a very busy guy, class. Got a lot of um, lots of baits to make, lots of stuff to think about, and uh, yeah, but he'll be here. All right, you guys. Uh, we're closing up on nine o'clock. Uh, I think that uh, it's uh, soon going to be time to go. Um, we have a lot of stuff to do at Canal Gratis. We're filming almost every day now. I need to clean the boat and I need to get it ready for the next session um, and um, yeah, to make sure so that we can deliver pike fishing films and perch fishing films for all you guys. So um, yeah, uh, before to be, be sure to check out canalgratis.se, our web shop and uh, have a look at the power dots. We also got some uh, uh, other cool stuff in there, garlic pens and smelly pens and bullet weights and stuff that is coming up for the perch season so feel free to drop in there and have a look support us support our work make sure that we get fishing films um, for you guys all year round more fly versus jerk tia molino wonders I'll, I'll i'll drop three more questions then we'll go do we get some flams or trams soon kevin just came online probably and yes there will be flams or trams on thursday don't miss that. Uh, we'll Flams of Trams the week after that too, I think. Uh, there will actually be a new intro on Flams of Trams also. We're working on that. Yeah, exactly. Henkovic backed me up there and says Flams of Trams will be on first day. Yes, more Fly vs. Jerk is coming up also. It's going to take time, but there will be more Fly vs. Jerk. We're not stopping now, guys. Don't worry. And that's very much thanks to your big support. Hey, Lucas Leek uh, says, uh, it's my birthday today. <laughs> uh, big congratulations, Lucas. Happy birthday. I'm so glad that you chose to spend your birthday here with us. Um, hope you enjoyed the, <laughs> hope you joined the show. All right, you guys. Um, yeah, it's time to go for me. So thank you, guys. To... Um, you and if you ever get time, I'll take you to that Clearwater Lake we talked about. See, ah, all right, I see you. Guys, be sure to tune in next Tuesday. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll sh Let's talk about the shows that has been going on. I'll try to dig up some more nice tips and tricks for you. And we'll see if the pike fishing has started moving in Sweden. And if uh, things has gone the way we want them to. Which is, <laughs> we want the pikes to start feeding. That's what we do. All right, you guys. Have fun. Bye, bye, bye. We should have an extra. Why don't we have an extra?